What's going on? It is Monday. It is Wednesday, the 30th of August. You guys are watching this is September. Happy September, everybody. What's going on? It's it's fall. It's almost fall. All right. It's ready for pumpkin spice season. It's ready for, I don't know, a bunch of Halloween outfits coming out soon. A bunch of people dressing up. Which is fucking weird. That shit's weird, man. Damn, that shit's weird. Imagine that shit. Like, I haven't done Halloween in a long, long time. But, one second. One second. I'm about to go live. You guys can see this live. Hopefully, I don't break anything. I don't even know what I did. <clears throat> Keep it raw on here, man. Yeah, dude. It's almost September. Uh, my birthday's on the 9th. I'm turning 23 years old and 23 years of I don't know what I've accomplished. I was thinking about that today, man. I've been running around with like a chicken with my head cut off lately. It's been crazy. I had my first day of classes last week. Um, and Jesus Christ, I, I usually don't feel like I get myself in over my head. But I mean, I'm sure you guys, if you guys are in college or if you've been in college for the past, you know, within the past five years or even if you're in high school, colleges are so weirdly set up. I remember, and I'm not old by any means, but I'm not like... In the college world, I'm young. I'm old. You know, I'm 20. I'm going to be 23. Sorry, guys. i got to catch my breath. I'm going to be 23 years old, which is relatively old for college. And I always get really nervous at the beginning of each semester because of the way that schools are set up now with, like, their textbooks and their online classes, like, their online assignments. Online classes are different because you expect there to be a lot of shit. That you got to do. But these online computer systems. Like where you turn in homework. I may just. I usually make everything seem. A lot more intense than it actually is. That's like a characteristic flaw that I have. But also I think it's a good thing too. Because it makes you just. Become like. like you do a lot of things better. Because you're so worried that you're going to fuck them all up. But um. Didn't do that right. <laughs> uh, yeah just so many. Like, my math lab, my science lab, my, like, Wiley Plus and all these different systems just to do homework. And I am, like, I'm, if I was a professor, I feel like it would still be easy just to go, like, the paper route. Like, just break out some paper, turn in assignments every once in a while, and give, you know, get a textbook online if you want to. Or just, and I get, that's, like, when I get really stressed out. That's, like. I don't get stressed out about, out about out about the classes so much, but I get stressed out about the about doing super well. You know, I want to start off on the right foot, and that's with everything in life, but I want to start off really well. And I know for me, I make everything out to be so much worse than it actually is. Like the reality in my head, the way I look at things is the best possibility for some people. You know, but for me, the worst possible thing that can happen to me is not that bad. Like, it's really not. And that's just kind of where my head is on everything I, I do. If I, like with school, I'm trying so hard to get literally like 100% in my classes. So if I get like a 92, it's still really good. But I feel like I could have and I should have got that extra 8%. Because I just set that bar so high for myself. I've always been that way. I've always set the bar as high as I I mean, I haven't always been. I've learned to develop that. But I've always set the bar super, super high. And it is a, usually it's a good thing, right? But sometimes it's hard and sometimes it's hard to deal with, especially if you, um, you're, because what, what, what comes with that is also you become your worst enemy. And you just, you can never fully feel fulfilled. So like when I'm going to take these classes, I'm going to, you know, try really hard this semester. I'm going to work really hard. I'm going to end up getting, you know, maybe... You know, three A's, two B's, four A's, a C. It doesn't matter. But I'm gonna end up doing well in these classes. But and then and then I'm gonna look at that and be like, the stress I put myself through 
just wasn't worth it, right? Um, but at the same token, it is. Otherwise, you wouldn't do that well. You know, I just, no matter what somebody, no matter the bar that someone set for me or the expectation someone has for me, it doesn't matter because that's not, I'm the, the expectations I have for myself farly outweigh that, you know? It's, it's so much higher. Like, I expect myself to do things as perfect as possible. Um, and I've developed now, I'm, I, I have this ability, I've been developing this, uh, this, this ability to be okay if it's not perfect every time. Um, and, and, and understand that it's not going to be, and it shouldn't be. And that's something that if you just always expect perfect, perfect out of you, but you don't ever come back down when it doesn't work out a hundred percent, shit can get dangerous. You know, it's, it can get really dangerous because then you just develop this very, very hard self hate towards yourself. And, and it can, it's hard on relationships because people almost think you're being cocky. Like, like you are not appreciative and it's, and, and a lot of people, and I've noticed that some people close to you feel like they're not enough. You know, they feel like they, they can never be enough for you because you are so hard on yourself because you don't feel like you're enough for yourself. So I've had a, it's been, it's been a touchy, rocky subject and I've had to really, you know, take like a different, um, uh, different strides to better it in many ways. And just with the school, I just want to make sure everything's set up straight. And just by me even being worried about it means that I'm going to do well. I had a, having a conversation with someone at, at, at the gym and I don't want I'm not going to get into detail, but basically he didn't fulfill what he wanted to fulfill and what he wanted to fulfill was not easy. Um, something that most people wouldn't ever even consider doing. Um, something that most people would laugh at if, if they even had the opportunity to do it because it puts you so far out of your comfort zone. And I was having a conversation with them and we, we agreed on something and it's, it's what I was just saying. It's when you meet somebody who is above average in every aspect of their life, you can tell immediately. And when they, when they are um, resilient on a topic and they keep on trying on a subject to perfect it. And if there's a little moment of downfall, it gets to them. They go to bed with it. They wake up with it. They, they get depressed about it. They get really hard on themselves. They start analyzing everything they did from that, that day to the time leading up to it. And this is with an, anything. You know, we all know those people. And that is, that's a great thing, right? Because it forces you to just elevate yourself. I mean, if you are going 110% at everything, when you don't get 110%, you get 80, 80%, 90%, 100%. It's still fucking good, right? But but what comes along with that mentality is also the same sense of I'm not good enough. You know, if you are just putting 60% in everything, but 60% is okay with you because it's validating you and it's showing yourself that, hey, you're doing a good job, but you're not doing a great job and you're not doing the best job, but you're doing 60%, but you're fulfilling that. You're checking off the, the, the mark every day. You're checking off the box. You know, that is the indication of somebody who's going to do great things and somebody who's currently and already doing amazing things and is already farther and, and superior at a certain subject than most people will ever be are the people who break down every single little mistake they made and they overanalyze everything. You know, they overanalyze everything and their mistake is not that big. It's not a big deal. It's not like you failed. It's not like he failed. It's you didn't fail. You're putting your neck out into something that's not easy to do, not easy to accomplish. Of course, you're going to have setbacks. And it can be really hard. It could be really hard because you don't have anywhere to turn to. You know, when I started uh, the clothing company, I had nowhere to turn to when it wasn't succeeding. I mean, there's not like people my age where I can be like, hey, man, what did you do when your company didn't grow as quickly as possible? What What happened when your manufacturer just said, hey, we're not shipping your clothing for another two weeks and you've already been marketing it and promoting it for two months that this would be the launch date. You know, what do you do when when you have a bill that you weren't expecting and it just dries out your bank account and you have to make the other 50% deposit down on your clothing so you can get it and you ship it? 
but you don't have the money. Like, who do you turn to? And this is a this is a something that's hard when you start separating yourself from the pack, when you start going beyond what other people are doing, because you you become isolated, you know. And it's not even the success. The success is going to make you isolated too, but it's a process. It's the it's the unknowing. It's not not actually knowing what the result's going to be. That can be very hard. Also, because people don't want to talk. You know, people don't want to. If you're doing something where other people look at you as, um, damn, look what he's doing, that makes you almost like an enemy, right? Because people fear that, and it shows insecurities of what they're going through. And even people listening to this episode right now probably don't want to hear that shit, but it's the truth, man. It's it's the, it's the God's honest truth. And if you're ever super worried about what you did and you wish you could have done it better here and there, I 100 a hundred percent guarantee that you've already done better than the average did during that specific task. That's just the truth, man, because you give a fuck. Giving a fuck is so rare nowadays. It's so rare. You know, people don't care at all about much anymore. And I think a lot of that has to do with like the lack of self-respect people have for themselves. You know, if you truly cared about yourself and you truly cared about what people thought about you, you would walk around with your chest up. You know, you would walk around with confidence. You would, you would, you know, if you pee on a toilet, you would wipe it off when you clean it. If you go to park in a parking spot and you're too close to the white mark, you will back your car out and you will straighten that shit up. You know, you won't take the leg way out. You will put the freaking shopping cart back where it's supposed to be because It makes the job easy for everybody else, you know, who pushes those shopping carts. If you are doing that, if you're that person, dude, I guarantee, man, you're already ahead of the mark. So you're, I know you're watching this, man. Don't fucking worry, bro. You'll be fine. It's going to be all good, man. Uh, Shit always opens its way up. Even if things don't work out for some things, other things come along and, I know for me, the greatest thing I ever did was one of the greatest things I ever did was stop working at the restaurant, not because I didn't like the place, but because I just wasn't mentally prepared to working a job like that. You know, I wasn't ready for the super late nights. I wasn't ready for the, you know, the drama that comes along with that, the 60 hour work weeks. And I also wasn't ready to just say, this is it. And the money, and I know that the money was too good that I didn't, you know, it wasn't out of my realm to be like, this is it. That could have easily been an option. I knew I didn't want that. That was not what I wanted. Um, And then, you know, when I stopped working there, shit opened up for me, bro. Things started falling into place the way they should have fallen into place. And that's what happens, man. And things will fall into your place, into your hands. For anybody out there, you know, the hardest times of your life are just literally the opportunity for new things to arise. I was having a conversation at work and it's like, we all are, are actually with my dad. We are all given these opportunities. You know, he's reading the book Outliers. Oh, by the way, Malcolm Godwell is apparently coming out with a new book. I had no idea. I am so stoked to read it. And, you know, everybody's given these opportunities. And it's so many people are blinded by these opportunities because they've already pigeonholed themselves in what they do and who they are as a person, you know? So if you're like Bill Gates, for example, and I talk about it all the time, but if you're like Bill Gates, for example, and you you know, you are in front of these computers all day, but you've already considered yourself to be a basketball player, you're never going to catch that opportunity. But if you don't self-identify with anything as that being your personality, he didn't do that with anything. He, but, but he knew that he liked computers. If he was in basketball, he would have never caught that opportunity, you know, and it's, the things arise at certain times and you got to pounce on that shit, man. You got to get it and you can't be lazy and you got to train. And that's why I love working out because you literally train yourself every day to be uncomfortable, to make up, to make decisions that are uncomfortable, man. Like to bump up the weight, to do an extra rep, to, to do more weight, to run a little bit longer, to increase the intensity, to do an extra push up, to, sit in the sauna for five minutes longer. These things that you make yourself uncomfortable. 
So when opportunities come where you have to be uncomfortable and you got to pivot a certain way, you know how to. You literally have trained your fucking body and you trained your mind to find comfort in those decisions that are normally hard. And normally people will walk, t- look at them, size them up maybe. Before they even size them up, they're already turned around. They're walking away. Don't You don't want to do that shit, man. And it starts from within. It starts from within. It starts from looking at yourself in the mirror and respecting yourself and saying, you got this, bro. And if there's an opportunity, don't be embarrassed. Fucking chase that shit. Like for, like if I could talk to myself when I was 15 or 16, 17, 18, 19 years old, even 20, I would be like, Hey bro, you know what? You're not special. Get your shit done. Do it now. Don't worry about it. Who cares what people think about you? You always say you don't care about what people think. Well, it's because you're the most insecure person I've ever met. That's me talking to myself. Insecurity is dangerous, man. It's so dangerous, you know, and that's why it's hard. Once you start doing well in anything, people love to start taking shots at you. People start pulling out the arrows and shooting you. And if you fall, people just keep on shooting you with arrows, man. They want to see you down. They want to crush you, bro. They don't want to see you raise up. They don't want to see you win. You winning means they're losing worse because they're not making any progress up the hill. They're flatline, bro. They're dead, man. When your heart is no longer beating, you're dead. To me, that's flatlining, bro. So people don't want to see that shit because then they got to look into the mirror every day and be like, fuck, man, they're doing what I want to do. So guess what, man? Just keep going up. When you fall down, turn around, look at the arrows, embrace that shit. Embrace that shit. Take apart what you did. Why did this fail? Let's not do that again. Let's, 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 Let's change out the plan a little bit. Let's go this route instead of that route. You know, and it's, that's what happens. So when my friend didn't do what he wanted to do and he was upset with himself, well, guess what, man? Shit's going to turn around for people. It always does for good people. You're a good person. The people that I know are good people. And I want to give a big thank you for my friend Charles for coming on this podcast, bro. I didn't, he, he didn't ask. I asked him to be on this episode, to be on this podcast. Why? Because I legitimately respect the shit out of that man. And you know what? You can say what you want about the episode. You can say what you want about him. But you know how hard it is for people to sit in front of a camera for an hour and talk and be open like he was? To be open like he was? You know how many people he helped? I, I haven't It's not. I haven't seen it yet. It's uploading in an hour or so. And who cares how well it does? It can get 100 views, 200 views, or 10 views. 10 people, man. Like, that takes a different kind of confidence, bro. And I respect anybody who comes on here and they do that, you know, and I don't like agendas. I don't want anyone on here with an agenda. It was a conversation, bro. You saw that. The wine started kicking in with me, you know, about halfway during it. And I just started acting little nuts, bro. But that's what I'm talking about. Like, there's something about that, about being vulnerable, because that's when you can connect to people vulnerability brings connections, you know, and, but then what happens with that? You either find a connection where somebody who just takes advantage of you, rips your fucking heart out and eats it or kicks it. Or you find when you're vulnerable, you find people who actually give a fuck about you, bro. You know what? That's what he did. He was vulnerable. He opened himself up and people are going to respect him now. And more than anything, people can relate to him. And that is what it's all about. That's why I do this podcast because I want to relate to people I want people to watch my podcast and be like, damn, that was cool. You know, mad respect, bro. Maybe, you know what? And also, I want people to be like, damn, that helped me. Because I always always want to watch, I I would love to watch a podcast with someone my age just spitting real shit up there, just saying whatever's on their mind. No, nothing filtered, no bullshit, no polished, anything. Yeah, man. I don't know. I went on a little tangent there, but. It's the truth, though. I believe in that shit. If you're micro-analyzing yourself, you're already way ahead than everybody else that you know personally. And you're already on your path to do great things when you're breaking down every one of your mistakes and dissecting them one by one by one. That's the truth, man. Yeah. Probably shouldn't do ice on camera. 
That was nasty. Yeah, man. So I really liked having him on here. Um, it was really exciting. I'm gonna get a, you know, I'm gonna get my mom back on. I didn't feel like I asked the questions that I wanted to with her. She's a, I mean, obviously she's a woman, but she's a woman in a field of just men. <laughs> like she's a cop, bro. So I think there's a questions I didn't cater to that I think she could she single handedly can change forty percent of the girls who watch this their their mind state. Because I could tell you one thing about my mom, she never played the victim role. You know, she would get out there and I mean she's right now the boss of twenty men. No, she never played the victim role. She was always the boss. You know, she's like I'm going to, these men have respect. I don't care if they get it naturally because they're men or whatever, but you know what? I'm going to de- demand respect. And I want to ask her questions like that. I'm still working with my dad. I'm going to get my dad on um, an episode very soon. Um, then my dad and my mom, and then a few family friends and whatnot. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's, I'm really excited about that. So school, I, I started on Tuesday and 8 a.m. to 9.15, 9.30 to, what, 10.45. I, basically, I have class from 8 to 3.15, and then I work 5 to close. You know, and it's good, right? It's I'm busy. Uh, but <laughs> there was just something about being back up at Towson or at a university and being the old, one of the older kids in the class, there's just a completely different perspective you have on school. At least for me, you know, there's something about being up there and paying for it yourself. And, and just, I mean, I'm at the same school that the same parking garage that I came to school yesterday in. The last time I left that parking garage is when I dropped out of school and I knew I wasn't coming back, you know, and it's so insane for me to think that it's been only a year and a half since that. And, my mind state, my mindset on that has completely just revamped. It's completely changed. And I mean, damn, dude, I was excited, bro. I was excited and I still am excited. Just nervous, but I'm excited, man. It's about so many things that are just finally starting to like show face, you know? There's just so many aspects of my life that are finally coming together and it's a beautiful thing. And I, you know, I've worked my ass off and you know, to be humble with it, but also to be honest with it, I deserve it. You know, and I'm even thinking about on my birthday, taking the day off and just hanging out and having a few drinks, something that I don't ever do. I never reward myself for anything because I've never felt like I've deserved anything. But there's just, it feels good. But what doesn't feel good is I was coming home yesterday and from 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 Baltimore from Towson, so I drove through Baltimore instead of driving around Baltimore, which was already my first mistake. You, I mean, I because all my GPS has said an hour and four minutes to get to work from where I was leaving if I went through the city, and then the other option was an hour eleven minutes going six ninety five, so like the Beltway around Baltimore, and I usually don't make this decision. And I knew the one I should have made. I should have made the Beltway because although, like, when you put... Because the GPS doesn't pick up green lights and red lights and, you know, just traffic jams and people making illegal left turns, that happens in Baltimore. Um, So I take it through Baltimore. and I don't know where you are watching this podcast. I don't know where you are in the world watching this podcast. But, dude, Baltimore is and when Trump said that Baltimore is like nasty he like compared us like rats and shit I don't know if that was the right comparison but what I am going to say is it is not it's just not a pretty city you know and I might get hate for that but it's just the truth man it's just wasn't pretty and it's so sad to see man I mean I was driving through some rough parts and the amount of homeless people is crazy, man. There's so many at every street corner. There was this one guy, and I felt horrible. And there's, it's so hard for me to to do something about it, you know. 
I do give him money. Some people don't do that. Some people think that's like, like you're aiding them in their drug use and you're aiding them and because they may just use the money for something bad. First off, Joe Rogan has this quote where he says, well, you're probably just going to use that money for alcohol and drugs anyways, you know, so. But I like that quote. But it also, it's just... When people say that, I get it. Like, I totally get it. I understand where you're coming from. You feel like you... By giving them money, you're assuming that... Also, you're making the assumption that... Um, they are still a current drug addict. And, you know, they they don't want to make a change. And... I, I don't know. I, I used to. I honestly used to be the same way. I don't want to give money because I don't want them to go out. I don't want to help them die and overdose. Like, I get it, dude. I understand, but who are you to really make that decision? You know, and even if they are going to use drugs and even if they are going to go buy alcohol or whatever, I just feel like I feel like most of the time it's just an excuse not to give money away to somebody. And I was just driving and this dude, and most of the time it's like veterans and the mental illness throughout the homeless community is so high, man. I mean, you think about, I have class with this one guy who, I don't know, I, I, I think he's on the spectrum. I talked to him just for a second. Um, I think he's on the spectrum. He only wears orange. Um, the professor said something like, right when he walked in. The kid sits right next to me. I sat right next to him. I saw him. I sat right next to him. I saw him sitting out in, class, out in the hallway, and I felt I felt for the guy. You know, it's college. It's not easy. It's better than high school, but it's still not easy. And, you know, he probably doesn't want pity, and I wasn't pitying him, but I just wanted to treat him like a person. Because, like, you know, he was a bigger guy. He was overweight. Um and I could see that he struggles with communicating with people. And I fell for the guy. And, you know, my professor, he's a nice guy, but he's just very rash. I've actually, this is my second semester with him because I dropped out of, when I dropped out of school, I dropped out of his class, which is kind of funny. He hasn't recognized me yet, though. <clears throat> but my teacher walks in. And he looks at him, he's like, oh, that's a bright shirt there, kid. And the guy immediately, he just goes like, you know, he just, and I didn't mean that to be offensive, but he just started stuttering. He didn't know what to say. And he immediately just started shaking back and forth and his legs just started kicking around. And the professor, I think, picked up like, because the it wasn't his fault. The professor didn't know. But we're sitting in class, and he's wearing orange Crocs with the orange um, oil shirt with orange pair of shorts, mainly black but with the orange stripe. He's got an orange pencil. He's got an orange pencil case, an orange folder, orange notebook. Um, and he doesn't stop moving his body. You know, he's always – he's stemming. Um, I think that's the proper word. He's stemming. He's keeping his body moving. He's not doing a lot of things with his hands, but he's moving his feet up and down. He's hopping up out of his seat. And at first, I thought he just had, like, really bad ADHD or even, like, um, a more level-off Tourette's syndrome, which maybe it was, but he I, – I don't know why I'm sharing this story. Oh, yeah, homelessness. Wow, that was a bad connection. Way to make yourself sound like an asshole, like. But um, I'm just watching him, and he's stemming a lot, and he's – like, the teacher said – here we go. Here, here's an example. Um, the teacher said, hey, so on the back, write down two things that you're hoping to learn about law. And right when my teacher says that, he says, um, or no, before he asked that question, he said, write down your cell phone number just in case, you know, if, if you need to text me, I know, or if I need to text you, put out a group text if class is canceled. And this is, he ra the kid next to me raises his hand and he's going like this. He doesn't know if he wants to raise his hand or not. And by this point in the class, people are already, like, looking at him too long. You can hear people chitter-chatting with him. And I'm sitting right next to him, and I, I was like, hey, man, what's up? And he just looks at me, and he's like, he's, like, moving his head, bug-eyed at me. He's like, huh, huh. And, you know, I and he asked a question, which is just a question that you don't really ask. Um, he's like, how do you want us to write your phone number? And he's stuttering. He's like, how do you want us to write our phone number? 
do you want the dashes? Do you want dots? Do you want no, 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 no dashes? And he's saying it's taking forever to say it. And my professor, I guess, like, kind of made a joke. He was like, just, uh, you know, do it however you want. Do it however you want. You know, just be creative. I want you to think about it. I want you to do it the way you think you can do it. Because he was being facetious. You know, he was talking, like, if he was just talking to me, that's what he would say. I would understand. I would know he was joking. But the guy, the kid next to me kind of goes into, like, a panic. He's, he's, he, doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't want to make the decision. That's not what he asked. He asked for an answer. So he starts moving back and forth. His legs really start kicking. I'm like, hey, man, you know, put, put dashes up. You know, do, 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 do the dashes. I think that's the right way to do it. And he doesn't really acknowledge me, but he looks at me and he just turns back and he puts the dashes. And then the teacher's like, write two questions that you want to be answered. And, and as the kid is writing them down, first of all, he didn't write them down for like 20 minutes. And then he wrote one down and he, and then, but he let, when he, when he figured out the, because he didn't want to, he didn't know why he was writing down the questions. He wanted to write down really good questions, which I respect, dude. And he had good questions. Um, Because I was looking over there, I was peeking over there. And you just felt for this kid. I felt for him because I was, you know, he when when he had an idea to write what to write down, he's just in the middle of class, like, I have an idea. I have an idea. And he, you know, everyone looks at him like, what the fuck? What's going on? And then by the end of it, he's like, I actually got two questions, you guys. He's like looking around and. You know, people are just being rude. You know, these are kids. College people are kids. I mean, literally kids. I don't care if you're 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. You're a kid, you know. And I'm just trying to... I know I'm not really going to be friends with him, but I want him to know, hey, dude, it's all good, man. Yeah, you're fine. You're okay. And it just made me think, like, as I was driving home and I saw these homeless people, I was like, dude, this kid in my class, man, like, he's autistic, um... He had really bad stemming. He has no friends, at least in that class where he, you know, he he's not socially accepted by most people. He's still in college learning, which I think is fucking badass, bro. I think that shit's cool, man, that he's still with mainstream education learning. He's probably a fucking genius, too, honestly. He's probably a really smart guy. Um, but I was just thinking, man, it doesn't, like, we don't, it doesn't take much, man. You know, if you get a bad break in life and let's say I have three kids and a wife and I have a really good job and I lose my job two weeks later, one of my kids die from whatever, I probably end up getting a divorce because I put too much tense uh, tension on our relationship and then I'm divorced. I have a kid that passed away. I don't have my job anymore. And then, you know, it's just, it takes just one too many bad breaks, hard breaks and then you end up there, you know, you end up on the streets. And for someone like him, he just kept on sticking in my head because I was thinking, I'm, and I honestly, I started getting anxiety sitting next to him because he just wouldn't stop moving, you know. And I felt, since I was interacting with him, and this is selfish on my part, honestly, I think, I'm not too sure, I don't know the psychoanalyst of this, but I felt guilty because I felt like people were watching me and that made me self-conscious and I was trying to pay attention. He was at the corner of my eye just shaking and jumping up and down and stuff. And he wasn't getting, he wasn't being too loud. And if he was starting to be loud with his feet, he would calm his feet down and he would like jump out of his seat, which he was a heavier guy. So you could hear him when he hit back on the ground with his butt. But my immediately thought, my immediate thought was when I saw the homeless person, I was like, dude, if you're struggling with that, you know, your parents love you but they've had to deal with you forever and the connection is probably not the same and you can feel that as a ch- child and every class you go to all day just that day alone people are giving you weird looks and then you do that for his whole school semester for a whole year and you do that throughout high school and middle school where kids just don't have filters and they crush you and you're just emotionally damaged and the one thing that you want to do is just learn you can't even do anymore bro like of course you fucking Sometimes you just you say, fuck it, and you just say, I'm out, you know, and it made me sad, bro. It, it, up, it pissed me off, too, because it really fucking pissed me off because so many people, I don't know why they just don't see that. Like, how do you not, how can you not tell this kid has some neuro, um, neuro deficiency going on in his brain how can you not tell and how dare you make fun of somebody like that 
you know? Like, I got anxious, and I started getting nervous, but that's, I'm not being an asshole. That's just it, man. That's true. I wasn't talking about him. I wasn't calling him a freak, and it's like, you just can't assume everybody who's homeless is just a fucking piece of shit, bro. I mean, I was in Roanoke, Virginia, and there was this homeless dude right at the edge of a gas station. Veteran dude had a flag on his little, uh, his disabling uh, electric car machine because he didn't have legs, bro. And he had a flag and he was just saluting everybody. You know, that guy's homeless, bro. And it's like, he's a veteran. That's bullshit, man. That's embarrassing. That's embarrassing as a country that that shit's happening. That's embarrassing. There's successful cases of using of microdosing MDMA to save people from PTSD. But what, you're scared? You can't help these people? And I get it, man. I get it. Some of these people just don't want help. You can you can bring a horse to the water, but they don't drink out of it. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't make them drink the water. I get it, man, but... Sometimes you just want to take people and just slap them across the face. Be like, bro, what are you doing, man? Like, come on, why don't judge that person? Like, clearly they suffer some sort of mental disorder. Psychologically stunted too, man. People don't realize that. You could be fine throughout your entire life. But there's something going on at the age of four years old with your mom. And there's a different dude coming over. But your dad doesn't know about it. And the next thing you know, your mom is like, she gets caught for cheating. And your mom told you to keep your mouth shut for so long. And then you turn up to be 20 years old. And you just don't trust your wife anymore. You know, psychologically, you are damaged. And then that makes your wife cheat on you because you don't trust her at all. So she feels that there's no relationship there, you know? And then that shit just rolls on. Like, there's so many things that go on in a person's life. If you watch your dad just beat the shit out of people, including your mom all day, of course you're going to end up doing that, you know? And just people, just be friendlier to the people next to you. Don't assume that these people are just... Just fucking homeless because they woke up one day and said, oh, I want to be homeless. Some people do. I'm sure. I'm sure. Also, some people are just like, F this world. <laughs> I'm going to be homeless. And I'm, I guarantee there's la- they're definitely lazy people. There's definitely people who didn't know how to deal with one bad break in their life. Um, but there's also schizophrenics. There's also paranoid schizophrenics. There's also autistic people that daycare after daycare after daycare gave up on them. Gave up on them. The parents gave up on them. The doctors gave up on them. And they just go wandering out the streets one day, get lost, and they never come back. You know, there's also people who are predisposed to addiction and they start drinking and they start doing drugs and they just never figure the shit out, man. They never figure the shit out. And there's also some people who do heroin and then they just die the next day. You know, there's so many things that go into it. And as I'm driving through Baltimore, I'm seeing these homeless people everywhere, and for the first time in my life, not one of the fir- not the first, but a time that I remember, I was like, you know what? These people didn't fail themselves. They didn't help themselves. I'm not taking. I'm not giving. I'm not taking away all the credit from them for where they are, because there was choices that they made. But guess what? As a country, as a world, we failed them. You know. These mental disorders, man, they, 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 that's the, that's the result right there, man. Or death, right? Suicide. Um, people go in these psychosis states, man, and just broke my heart. This this dude was just, you know, he was just trying to be a kid. He was just trying to learn, you know, he was just, he was trying to get his questions answered. And I get it. It's hard. I mean, I get goosebumps just talking about it. And I get it, man. It's you want to teach a class and you don't want to have disturbances. But understand, have some empathy for people, right? Have some goddamn empathy. Don't say, I'm not going to give money because I don't want to contribute to the fucking drug use. Shut the fuck up, dude. What do you mean? What do you know? Do you know that? What if that was the money they were taking to get on a goddamn bus? To get on a freaking bus and go sign up for a job. And they had a freaking job application at McDonald's, right? 
You don't know. Who are you to assume that you know? You're not God. You're not Jesus. You're not the creator of the world. You're not evolution. Get out of here with that shit. I don't need the money. As much as money's tight for me. Look, look. I'm good, bro. Some people aren't. You don't have to be friends with kids like that in your class. Not saying that. But what I'm saying is don't fucking laugh at them. Be a human, dude. That could have been you, right? You didn't control where you were born, who brought you up in this world. Count count your blessings, dude. Be more uh, thankful for what you do have and stop just putting other people down. Because you think... Oh, why are you made fun of the one time? Dude, okay, fine. But they probably made fun of... They probably had a hundred people say that that day. That day, bro. And you know what? They probably come from a place where they feel like their household doesn't like them. They don't love them. And they probably don't feel any fulfillment. And they were looking for it all year to going to school to learn. And you're going to make fun of them. And you're going to laugh at them. joke man I was trying to go straight and this dude this homeless guy just cracked out of his mind I mean there's something that we call around here in Baltimore or as native Marylanders would say Baltimore there's something that we call it in, in Baltimore it's called the Baltimore lean and it's it's sad to see if you look it up on Google some of the pictures you know your first reaction is to laugh like because it looks funny but it's not funny. It's these people are just strung out early, early in the day. It's just fucking at the waist. The top half is just tilted over. And their bodies are just limp. And their neurons just shut off. And the body just stops working. And this guy, he looked like he was on his way to just fulfilling that Baltimore lean. He was old, like 65. And uh, uh, he was probably 60, but he looked like he was 90. And he had two canes. His legs basically, he was basically amputated. His legs weren't doing anything. And he was on the other side of the intersection for me on the left. And he was just, mouth was wide open, no teeth. I, I thought every step he was going to take, he was going to fall. I really did. I thought he was just falling every time. People were giving him money. And you could tell there's something about if you watch a homeless person, you watch people who give them money. The people who give them money are like people. People who may have been one step away from that. You know, people who have experienced hard times. You know, it's a lot easier to give to a nonprofit. You know, it's a lot easier to do that. And I'm not saying those are bad things and not good things. You know, more than money, I've given jackets away. I have a bunch of uh, silence inventory left over. I've been thinking about just going down to the city and just giving it away, bro. It's already paid for. I don't need my money. I'm good. I'm good, man, compared to those people. I mean, you drive under some underpasses in Baltimore, and I hear LA is even worse. I couldn't imagine, man, bro. Just gotta be, you gotta have some empathy in your heart. You gotta have some love in your heart. You gotta understand that shit is just not easy for most people. It's just not easy. You know, and that brings me to my final just little subject. If you find yourself right now in a place of um, weakness or you feel vulnerable in a way or you feel like you are just letting opportunities slip by or you just feel like you're on a train or you're on a roller coaster that there's no um, it's not exciting there's no drops there's no inverted loops anymore but there's also no exit anymore you know and you feel like you've just been wanting to get off for a while but you just don't know how to can't find the exit or if you are stuck in a bubble around people that just don't get excited with you. If you do something good, they don't celebrate it. Or you're celebrating everything for them. Or they're just putting you down and telling you why you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. 
or you find yourself in a place where you're just so hard on yourself at every aspect. You know, reach out for help, bro. Um, and I mean this shit with the bottom of my heart. My copay for my therapy is cheap. It's less than 20 It's less than $11 more than 9 I can't tell you exactly, but you can figure that out. And uh, there is people that can help you. You know, I can help you. Um, people want to be heard, right? People just want to be heard. And the hardest thing, the worst thing that someone can deal with is just never be heard. You know, because then you just, it becomes the cycle where you just don't think anything you say or do is important, which goes back to your character. Then you just don't feel important. And if you don't feel important, then what's your purpose, bro? <sighs> There's always help out there, you know, and I, this is not an ad. I'm not sponsoring anybody, but I know that this help out there. And I know that if you work your ass off and you try to help yourself, you will help yourself. I've done it. I've taken that leap. I was weak, quote unquote. I was not strong. I was not a man. You know, I, I resembled a, a very feminine action or being in touch with my emotions. All the bullshit that people say. All the bullshit that men say. I went to therapy, you know. I took a leap of faith. Yeah, it costs money, but guess what, dude? I'm lucky enough to be able to afford it, and I knew that that's what I had to do. And I made it my own. You know, I, I, I saved myself. And I know so many people out there that could do that shit. And everything that you want, man, everything that you want to do in life is right around the corner. Literally right around the corner. And the only thing stopping you is your fucking head. Straighten that shit out. Not perfectly straight. You never will. But straighten it up to a point where you feel like you have control of... Fucking 60% of the thoughts that come through each day. Start reading. Start conversating positively. Stop saying I, 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 I. Talk about other people. Listen to other people. Drop your opinions so you can hear other people talk. Um, but it's not weak, dude. It doesn't make you... You're, you're still a man. <laughs> you know, you're still a man. You're... Penis doesn't fucking get removed, you know. Go in there. <sighs> Not even just therapy, but just let people help you. You know, stop pushing people away. Let people help. I know, I know, I know. Some people didn't help you in life. I don't know your circumstance. And I know you've tried and you've put your head out there just... <sighs> Already so many times, hundreds of times, and people just cut it right off. And they yeah, they, they hurt you. But I'm not asking you to ask, do it for anybody else. Do it for yourself. Be selfish. Only surround yourself with people that you know. Because there's been people that have helped you. Look at those people again and let them help you again. You know, at least you know that they're not going to crush you because they've helped you before. And I think that's a very important thing. And I think that's something that we can all benefit from. Letting somebody take care of us when we need it. Some of us need it all the time. <sighs> yeah, some of, us, some, some of us do need it all the time. I know for me, I do. I slip up a lot. I need help often. No, I'm not, not embarrassed to say that shit. I need help a lot. Um, yeah. I think I'm going to end this episode here. I've covered a lot of things. It's a shorter episode. Um, I'm going away this weekend. I'm going to try to get up a video on Sunday. I'm going to see what I can do um, because I want to do a video every other day. Obviously, that's what I've been doing for the past like four weeks. Um, it's time consuming, but it's very worth it. And you guys support me like crazy, and I appreciate everybody who does that. And uh, yeah, guys, I'm going to end this episode here. This is episode 19. I think next episode will be 20, which is crazy to think about. But um, we're already 20% of the way to 100. And what are we, three weeks in? One month in? About a little over a month and a half in. And 
it's one of the most fulfilling things I've ever done in my life. And I swear to I swear by that, dude. It's one of the most fulfilling things I've ever done in my life. It feels so good. I love doing this. I love doing this because the shit that people say to me outside of this little corner of my bedroom is true shit, dude. People say some real shit to me. Like, you've helped me. And what you said actually meant something. You know, I don't think there's a better gift than that. You know, I don't think it's... I don't think life gets better. Yeah, guys. Love the people around you. Don't make quack, 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 Donald Duck. Uh, don't make quick and rash decisions about assuming you know who somebody is. Because you don't. You don't know what they've been through. Um, don't turn your nose and think that you're better than somebody because you're higher up on the finance, you know, you're higher up on the socioeconomic hierarchy. Um, give love. Give less hate. Take away the hate 100%. People around you that have helped you, let them help you. Take advantage of the advantage, the, the moments in your life that come up that are in your wheelhouse. Take the bat out, size up the ball, hit a fucking home run with it, guys. <laughs> That's the end of episode 19, guys. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please leave it a like, comment, subscribe on YouTube. If you guys are watching this on any uh, any of the platforms, Apple, uh, Spotify, or SoundCloud, please leave it a rating there, subscribe there. Guys, thank you so much for listening. Please, please, please have yourself an amazing weekend, a great week. Um, yeah, guys, episode 19, the Michael Lab Show. I'll catch you guys in episode 20, the big 2 20% to 100 Thank you so much, guys. Thank you.